Hello and welcome to this first look exploring session looking at Mustafa by uh, Thorpe Gravel. Um, uh, written, well, originally probably sometime uh, between 1594 and 1600, uh, with some revisions in the, uh, the, the 17th century around 1607 to 10 um and uh yes we're uh, we're going to be looking primarily at the the, the sort of slightly more earlier version of the uh, iteration of the text though i'm sure there's going to be some flanging between revision and, and things but uh, we've got noted in our script lots of uh, potential additional passages but we're going to be going with a, a slightly shorter version as it were uh, which i am uh, assuming is the earlier version uh, at this time but i'm now suddenly paranoid because i wasn't even 100 percent sure, sure when this 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 play actually came to being so uh, yeah um but that that, that i frantically spent the last couple of minutes looking through books going where the hell is this thing uh and that's now been res resolved so um yeah we're hopefully going to get through first two maybe even three acts this session uh reading today the part of rossa is <clears throat> Hello, my name is Greg. Um, tragedy tonight, comedy tomorrow. We shall see. We shall see. Reading Bellaby, Nuncius, uh, uh, and Achmet is Liza Graham, extremely murderous in London. Uh, reading uh, Camina is it's Tom from Brighton. And reading Solomon and Rustin is... Lindsay Beecham, actor in Norfolk. Ah, not in Norfolk, <laughs> in Scotland. Oh, my God. You haven't been in Norfolk for ages. <laughs> Losing my mind, clearly. So it's going to go very well tonight. Very well. Would you like me to do that again, Rob? No, no, no. I think we can allow your embarrassment to stand um, <laughs> for, for, for the Internet. Uh, I, th I think that's the way we roll. Um, so, uh, Lindsay, at least on the East Coast uh, uh, <laughs> of, of the United Kingdom, though not necessarily sure which country. Um, so, and I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I will mm. be reading uh, stage directions uh, as such as they are. And uh, the choruses as we go through, uh, just a general content warning. Uh, I mean, I don't know whether it's going to be a problematic text, but I'm just just going to say that there might be some 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 issues with a text uh, that is uh, set uh, in uh, in the, yeah not England uh, regarding any uh, foreign people mm -hmm. and or religions. So there might be all sorts of really ish problems uh, in this uh, that we may or may not find so uh, yeah we shall see what comes up so just be aware, aware of that um, uh, so without further ado we're going to dive into act one scene one and we're going to find out what happens with Solomon and Rossa Rossa the eternal wisdom doth not covet of man his strength or reason but his love and not in vain since love of all the powers is it which governs every thought of ours? I speak by Mustafa, for as a father, how often deemed I those light judging praises of multitudes whom my love taught to flatter, truths, oracles, and Mustafa's true stories. So dearly nature bids our own be loved, so ill a judge is love of things beloved. But is contempt the fruit of parents' care? Doth kindness lessen king's authority? Teaching our children pride, our vassal's wit, to subject us, that subject are to it? This frailty in myself I conquer must, and stay the false untimely hopes it works, threatening the father's ruin in the son. Many with trust, with doubt, few are undone. Sent for he is, nor shall the painted shows of fame or kindness longer seal mine eyes. For since he strives to undermine my crown, I will as firmly watch to keep him down. Solomon, my lord, the knowledge who was father to Mustafa made me poor, silly woman, think worth in blood had natural succession. But now I see ambition's mixtures may the gold of nature's elements allay. 
his fame untimely born, strength strangely gathered, honour won with honouring, greatness with humbleness, a bollock's heir and causes popular, and make me divine some strange aspiring mind. Yet doubtful, for it might be art or kind, but look into him by his outward ways. Persia, our old and brood enemy, treats a peace with the son without the father. The cause in all estates to prince is nice, but here much more. Where he that monarch is must, like the sun, have no light shine but his. The offers, real crowns or hopes of kingdoms, what sudden knot have bound up our divisions? Made them that only feared our greater growing offer such projects for our great offer such projects for our greater growing. It is true that private thoughts may easily change, but states whose ways are time, occasion, seat have other ends than chance in all they treat. Yet be it, all the world would us obey, and under our empire all empire lay. In monarchies, which surfeit more than pine, the king should judge. Strength knows what strength can weld. The best foundation else may overbuild. No, no. Upon the pitch of high attempts, I see him stand, sporting with wrong and fear, for law and duty both are captives there. His hopes, the hopes of all, for all aspire. His means, that proud, rebellious discontent which scorns both governors and government. Solomon, fear is broken loose within my spirits. It will or may, methinks already happens. His powers, those great, while well fixed occasion ready, shadows of mine to my heart deliver, confused noise within my ears to thunder. Of multitudes that with a baying threaten, Solomon, while well, fear to lose thee wisheth death, my fear again to leave thee wisheth breath. Rossa, I scorn there should be cause of fears in one man's rage, for hard then were our state that reigns of all the world desired to bear. Yet thy disquiet shall increase my hate. Thy wishes vain to thee yet never were, Exempt thou art from laws of my estate, for love and empire both alike take pleasure, part of themselves upon des deserts to measure. Ah, but that all my joys have sorrow's image, I could say I take pride in thine affection, for power may be feared, empire adored, good fortune wooed, and followed for ambition. Rewards may make knees bow and self-love humble, but love is only that which princes covet, and for they have it least, they most do love it. Care therefore for thyself, I hold thee dear, and as for me, though fortune be of glass and apt to break, King's life kept but in flesh and easily pierced, King's crowns no higher than private arms may reach, yet these all daring spirits are rarely known, that upon princes' graves dare raise a throne. Sir, few in number are time's presence children. Sorry, what, sir, few in number are time presence children, where man ends, there ends discontentment's empire. Novelty in flesh have always had a dwelling. Then tell me, Lord, what man would choose his room that must expect in wickedness a mean, else be sure to feel a fatal doom? Can that stay in the midst whose centers lowest? Old age is nature's poverty and scorn. Desires riches live in princes' children. Their youths are comets, within whose corruption men prophesy new hopes of better fortunes. Ah, sir, corrupt occasion still prefereth the wisdom that for self-advantage erreth. Wisdom is not unto itself in debt, that leaveth nothing but a god above it. Will he return from death unto the living? No, sir, but much may hap before his death. 
who thinking nothing worse and nothing after knows thought of not wrong is death if princes live where dead all heirs their own good do forgive i sent he comes and come is in my power before he comes who knows your fatal hour wicked wrestle both with might and slight while princes live each man's life guard if theirs when they are dead men's loves go with their fear slain by the way less grudge more safety were wrong is not princely and much less is fear <laughs> these yeah. glorious hazards tempt and hasten fate they will become a man but not a state this fear in women shows a kindness too, and is for men to thank, but not to do. Is providence of no more use to power? Than to preserve the fame of power entire, which often undermined is by fear. I do suspect, yet is there nothing done. I lose my fame if I so kill my son. Though I yet know not he hath done amiss, I doubt, and heavy prince's doubting is though i resolve i will not kill him there it mortal is if kings see cause to fear when mustafa returns my jealous care will very hardly danger oversee order alone holds states in unity and enter to the groom uh, as we go into act one scene two uh, bellaby and nuncius Fond man, distract with diverse thoughts on foot, that racks thyself and nature's peace doth break. Judge not the gods above, it doth not boot, nor do thou see that which thou darest not speak. Power hath great scope, she walks not in the ways of private truth. Virtues of common men are not the same which shine in kings above, and do make fear bring forth the works of love. Admit that Mustafa not guilty be, who by, who by his prince will rise, his prince must please, and they that please judge with humility. Yonder they are, whose charge must be discharged. In Rossa's face, behold, desire speaketh. He keeps the laws that all laws for me breaketh. Is Mustafa in health and coming? My lord, already come, for what can stay where love and duty both teach to obey? In what strange balance are man's humours poised, since, ye, since each light changed within us or without, turns fear to hope and hope again to doubt? Thus it work in man, much more in thrones, whose tender heights feel all thin airs that move, and work that change below they use above. Or on the axis of our humours turn, church rights and laws, subjects desire and wit, all which in all men come and go with it. Rossa, a king, ought therefore to suspect fear's fearful counsel, which incline to blood, wherein but truths no influence is good. Else will inferior practice ever cast such glassy shadows upon all our errors, as he that sees not ruin shall see terrors. Power, therefore, should affect the people's stamp, whose good or ill thoughts ever prove to kings like air, which either health or sickness brings. Now, Rossa, by these straight lines, if we sound the hollow depths of Rosten's mystery, he will the canker of this state be found. Long hath he waved betwixt my son and me, making succession sacred, whilst he felt practice could not divide the bark and tree, his end being not to find or cherish truth, but rather vices where his art works ruth. Long hath he weighed our humours with his ends, to find which nature was the fittest mould for him to bring to pass in what he would. Though his power be on my old age built, yet that as slow to mine he dislikes, guilty seeking shields for every blow it strikes. Now in my son, though active powers he find, yet what he cannot govern gives offence, 
from birth or worth still fearing competence. He grounds his work on jealousy of kings, where hopeful goodnesses, oft in successors, seem not strengths as they be, but strong oppressors. When this art could not procure his fall nor shape our humours like Procusti's bed, where all that fit him not are ruined, straight then he offers up to my son, my life, my crown, and all that I have won. Such slender props are princes' favourites who, like good fortune's children, love their mother and never can be true to any other. In these nets shall he then catch him and me. And so this high and sovereign scepter power sink into slaves by my infirmity? No, no. When princes by defect of mind a proness feel to sink into their slaves, wherein they make their creatures their graves. By nature have they not a phoenix fire from their own ashes to revive again, and in their children's honour live and reign. Then, Rossa, judge, my love hath made us, and who can judge these humorists but we? Since hope and fear below lack eyes to see, Mustafa is through misprision hither come, brought to the practice of this crafty slave, careless in which he make the other's tomb. His nets are laid, our thoughts for stales pitched down to catch ourselves in and in us the crown. But nature's laws have conquered princes' doubts, and between king and man, what was begone concludes betwixt a father and a son. Behold, these sandy hearts have foundation. Yet hence must I with hazard work by will that hath to do with thought, nor good, nor ill. My lord, your doubts from arguments did rise of wanton pride, ambitious seeking love, and can remissions be in nature wise while states upon the steep of danger move? No, no. Think what pregnant grounds of his ambition resolved you first. His greatness was your danger. And shall a father waive a king's suspicion? <laughs> Since mischief whilst her head shows in a cloud, in Pluto's kingdom doth her body shroud. Suspicion may inquire, but not conclude. Both hope and fear do with excess delude. Tell, Bellaby, how did he welcome thee? In your access, what found you? Hope or pride? Was he reserved? Or else did he descend? Appeared I as his sovereign or his friend? His court was great, and that which adds to you is that all princes had their agents there, confessing in the son the father's due, and from them all the honour done him such as if none thought the world for him too much. Yet I no sooner to his presence came, but he paid all their homages to me. The rest looked on as when men wonders see. What was his cheer? Didst thou observe his eyes when thou declaredst? my will to have him come? First at your name he bowed in humble wise, the rest appeared to be a joyful doom. Only the Persian spake, it seems, with care. God make these favours good, for they be rare. This is the glass which the father looks not in. The workman hides, the instruments discover. See how it fits a king to be a lover? Sir, mark these words. When should their wonder grow? His scorn and grudge he worships and obeys in him or for him. What strange works are those? Tell me his manner. How did he dispose his followers and affairs till his return? The news of war against our Persian foes, I am sure, made not his undertakers mourn. The Persian agent some distraction showed, all else their eyes to their sun-rising time. What's the discourse of court, and what the face? 
His carriage, is it royally severe, reserved like us by attributes of place, or popular as power in people were? Shapes he his course to rule or gain a state? Is our course changed or doth he imitate? He winds not spirits up with power or fear. The ancient form he keeps where it is good. His projects, reformation everywhere. His care to have diseases understood. Reverent unto your throne, more to your deeds. It is no imitation which exceeds. What doth he in our church or law reprove? What error in our discipline or war? With zeal he doth adore the powers above. With zeal inferior duties paid him are. And for his ends on public centres move, his ends are served with everybody's love. His court like yours, the image of a camp. In yours your power, in his himself the lamp. He sees, men say, but only what he shows. I mean examples of both power and love. You see again what from within you grows, such humble fear as fearful power moves. His camp in rest and action both content. Assiduous order works this frame in either. Your discipline, now loose, now overbent, forced to use fear in both content in neither. This freedom, sir, makes them you two compare, of whom both he and they but shadows are. What be his troops, an army or a train? Come they to dwell or to go back again? His will was to depart immediately with no train but the Basha priest and I. Your honour only ministered debate. Princes, some thought, stood fast by keeping state. His pomp gave lustre to your power, some said, for princes should be gloriously obeyed. At this gap entered love and intercession. The multitude all liberties approved. The wise, to give them way, held it discretion where it gave honour to yourself above. Thus to the coast, number and order come, where Mustafa leaves all to bide your doom. Within the port, or where doth he attend? What's the aspect between his own and ours? Gains he or wanes he by approaching power? His foot on land straight to the church he goes. Applause and wonder follow to that place. Greater he by your influence still grows. Your troubles upon him the people place. Upon the state men prophesy progression, and see your age, tis true, in your succession. Your power and love both in his pomp appear, for even the pashas next to you I did meet, hastening to honour him whom you hold dear. What greater triumph to a glorious father than such a son for age to lean unto, whence declination may more forces gather and impotence retain ability to do? Goodness exiling jealousy of state from him whose duty sets his power a rate. Now, by the way, a paper up I took spread by the mufti, as it should appear, foretelling with authority of book what those times wrapped in clouds and these make clear, wherein these prophet spirits did foreshow the progress of this empire to the height, under what prince's humours it should grow, under whose weakness fall again by weight. Inferring this, that where declining spirits to govern mighty scepters God ordains, order no basis finds. Honour must fall where man is, where man is nothing place cannot do all. Again, where worth and wisdom sovereign be, and he that's king of place is king of men, change, chance, or ruin cannot enter then. And such a king must sit upon this throne, Unperfect times, they say, are fully run, and this perfection present in your son. Change hath prepared her moulds for innovation. I see inferior wheels of practice move, yet they prevail not on the powers above. His worth rests constant and yet works this motion. They to him, for him, sacrifice at random all which they have and have not in devotion. He is the glass in which their light affections come to behold what imago they shall take. If liberty they find, 
than anarchy they make. On time, place, truth, these spirits never rest. His worth thus innocent, how can I fear? Their thoughts thus violent, can power digest? Then government, thy hand must cut between my fearful dangers and his fearless praise. In all states, power which oppresseth spirits, imprisons nature, empire disinherits. This throne grew not by delicate alliance, combining state with state, all states to laws of idle princes and base subjects cause. We grow by curious improving all, ourselves to people, people unto us. Worth through ourselves in them we planted thus. And shall I help to make succession less? Blasting the births of nature and example in narrow fears of self unworthiness? No, no, the art of monarchy is more. Princes must strength by such succession gather with future hopes or present smarts are eased. Age hath a veil and majesty is pleased. Who makes can mar honor reward and fear are reigns of power the ends inherit there behold i stand amazed sir ease my heart a king less than a man more than a god i know not where to stay or how to part god of the day that wickedness shall die sir who is guilty mustafa or i he is now in the hands of power and time. His danger is to come, and ours is past. Let's see into what moulds our own are cast. Who would endure the sentence he may give between you two? You must be king that lives. Your grave for period is among your own. Neighbours. Church, people, soldiers made the stage where hope and youth shall mind fear and age. Most wretched I, raised to be overthrown. If you will die, then I am lost in you, and die you must if you believe your own. If you shall live, then am I proved untrue, hated by him you, whom you have placed above, lost unto you and ruined by my love. Ah, confidence, thou glory of the ill, how falsely dost thou blinded power assail, that having all yet knows not what it will. Rossa, you move me, yet remove I not. Man comprehends a man, but not a king. I feel myself, tis true, and I feel you. How to itself can power then prove untrue? Succession on the present never wins, but by the death of body or of spirit. All heirs by our mortality run in. Let not misprison wound me in thy love. Great inequality of worth you yield to them, you think can on my ruins build. And we have a first chorus of bashers or caddies. Like as mixed humours drawn up from the ground are unto many forms and functions bound, partly out of their native property, partly the climes through which their journeys be, some intermeteals that amaze below, others to comment which for threaten woe some into hailstones that afflict the earth others to rain which hastens every birth lightning and thunder only made of those which the cold regions double heats enclose it is so is frail mankind though in other fashion raised and let fall with his own earthly passion formed and transformed and made instruments in many shapes to serve powers many bents feeding superiors even as vapours do which bending themselves scourge their parents too some in misshaping meteors terrifying all constant spirits under tyrants lying 
Others like winds, which Aeolus makes blow to breathe themselves out while they overthrow. Some like sweet dews that nourish where they touch, like exhalations, some inflame too much. Bondage and ruin only wrought by those that kings with servile flattery enclose. Hatching in double heats of power and will, thunder and lightning to amaze and kill. The, thus tyrants deal with people's liberty. The nether region cannot long live free. Thus tyrants deal with us of higher place, as drawn up only to divert, disperse disgrace. Echoes of power that pleasingly resound those heavy taxes wherewith princes wound. Exhausters of frail mankind by our place to make them poor and consequently base. With colonies we eat the native down, and to increase the person wane the crown, with idle visions trafficking men's minds, to humble moderation in all kinds, till under false styles of obedience we take from mankind all but suffering sense. Yet even by these sails, for which sceptres move, we force it are with modest breath to prove which way these people tides will pass with ease. Crowns wounding deeply when they strive to please, whence as we dare not blow them up to rage. So again, if we quit this people stage, thrones know not where to act those fancy plays, which catch the lookers on so many waves, ere we, like dews drawn to the clouds above, straight grow with that attracting sun in love, which over rays of light things up to fall. In crafty power creation natural, Wrapped in which crown mists men cannot discern, How dearly they her glittering tinctures curn, Till thorough glassy time these cage birds see That honour is the badge of tyranny. Next, laws the next pillars be, which With which we deal, of sophistries of every commonweal, Or other net which people do ask leave, that they, to catch their freedoms in, may weave, and still add more unto the Sultan's power, by making their own frames themselves devour. These lesbian rules, with show of real grounds, giving right narrow will transcendent bounds, the Mufti and their spiritual jurisdictions, by course succeed these other guilt inflictions. Conscience, Annexing to our crescent star all freedoms that in man's frail nature are, by making doctrines large, strict, mild, severe, as power intends to stir up hope or fear. Which heavenly shadow with earth centres fixed, rack men by truth and untruth strangely mixed, and prove to throne such supporting cause as finally gives laws to all other laws. Thus, like the wood that yet who yields holes for the axe, upon itself to lay a heavy tax. We, silly bursher's help power to confound, with our own strength exhausting own ground. The art of tyranny which works with me to make them beasts, and high-raised thrones their den, where they that mischief others may retire, safe with their prayers lifting tyrants higher by which enthralling of ourselves with others prove we not both confusions heirs and mothers far unlike adam putting civil names upon those errors which the whole world if for if power reveal more than is her own people we say are checkers to a throne again if she to rise up will pull down creation, we say still in here's the crown. If good men chance to interrupt this way, too much in virtue oft there is, we say, since each inferior limb must from the head receive such standard and be balanced. If people grudge their freedom, thus made thrall, power is their body, but they but shadows all. If God himself, by law or influence, seems but to limit this omnipotence, even as in Christian courts of chancery, uh, though land or titles cannot settled be, yet where the person dares to disobey through him, his title may they imprison may. So, though with tyrants God transcendent be, 
and yet plague they his for too much piety, and for distinctions from the pulpit's doom leave still law crown impiety a room. This is our office under tyranny, where power and passion only current be. But where the better rules the greater part, and reason only is the prince's art, there, as in magnets of great volumed books, the little notes whereon the reader looks, oft aid his overpressed memory unto the author's sense, where he would be, so do true counsellors assist good kings, and help their greatness on with little things. Honour in chief, our oath is to uphold that by no traffic it be bought or sold, else look what brings that dainty throne work down, adds not, but still takes something from her crown, profit and her true mind, frug uh, frugality, incident likewise to our office be, as husbanding the sceptre's spreading right, to stretch itself yet not grow infinite, or with prerogative to tyrannise whose works prove oft more absolute than wise, nor mastering laws which freedom interrupts, nor moulding pulpits which is to corrupt and help change in, whose vanity still tends to work immortal things to mortal ends. But our part is to keep the justice free, as equal poising liberality, which both contents the people that receives, and princely giver more enabled leaves, likewise with four reign states we keep respect by diligence which seldom finds neglect in treaties still concluding mutual good since no one biased contract ever stood and in compliments we strive to hold such measure that outward form consume not inward treasure for betwixt man and man twixt king and kings our place should offer well digested things else as those crudities which do remain within the body, all complexions stain. So doth advantage betwixt state and state, though firmly got, yet prove unfortunate, and oft disorder-like in government, leave even those that prosper discontent. But is our great lord's character like these? Are disproportioned humours made to please? Can parasite, even unto nature's treason, draw any true life from man's zenith, reason? How then can vice in this confused state long escape the doom of never sparing fate? For as we see when sickness deeply roots, moist drink and jugs alike do little boot, because all should either nurse or cure as mastered by diseases grow impure. So when excess, the malady of might, have dropsy-like drowned all the styles of right, then doth obedience, else the foo food of power, help on that dropsy canker to devour, in which crazy times woe worth foreseeing wit, which mar itself may cannot help with it. For as those kings that conquer neighbour nations, first by the sword-like uh, first by the sword make chaos of creations, then spider-like a curious knitting spin, invisible to catch inferiors in. So, when the art of powerful tyranny hath undermined man's native liberty, then like lords absolute of words and deeds, they soon change weeds to herbs and herbs to weed, which, overwinding while the people fear, can tyrants hope of sanctuary there? Or when this fear have tied man's minds together, proves this a storm or constant wither, winter weather? Again, when selfness hath men's hearts estranged, is not one sovereign soon to have many changed? Lastly, where absolute seems only wise, is not one envious there in many eyes, disease thus grown? The crisis and the doom show princes must he ours or we their tomb as for as the ocean which is ever deep under her smooth face doth in secret keep the vast content of death's devouring womb where those desires which venture find a tomb aeolus with sweet breath making all things fair till he hath bound hope prentice to his heir then adding more breath to that breath they spend, makes tide with tide and wave with wave contend, enforcing men for tax to throw their goods 
into his merciless enticing floods, where, swallowing some in sight of those he spares, even they that prosper best must swarm with cares. So doth vast power at first spread out her slights of grace and honour, smooth bewitching baits, and when men lives, their goods and liberty, are left in trust once with her tyranny. Then ocean-like, blown up with storms of passion, but which, but excess, makes all seem out of passion. He takes advantage to devour the just, because to laws that limits thrones they trust, ruins the wise, whose eye discerns too much, where thereby brings power's errors to the touch, discards the learned for the difference they make between the truth and prince's sense, stains the religious as if they would stood, power's will, the stamp of all that's current good, yet saves it some that they may witness bear where power reigns, their worth must live in fear, thus are we soothers as all shadows be, sworn to the bodies of authority. Thus do inferiors, catched with their own ends, pay double use for all the set to lens. Not seeing, while man strives to stand by grace, he offers nature's freedom up to place, whose true relation between men and might assures us thrones should not be infinite. Lastly, lastly, thus do we suffer God to wane under the humans of a sultan's reign, and to the fatal mine of his son cut off our own lives on a less thread spun. Yay! <laughs> Ye gods, first chorus. <laughs> actually, I followed it um, mostly, uh, which I actually, and I have to say, this one has generally been a lot clearer than the other text by the same author that we have looked at previously. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's it, it does seem to be connecting in a way that uh, is is um, uh, is working. Though, yeah, that that is quite a chorus. I, I'm not a fan of choruses generally, but there were some nice bits in there. Um, just. Yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, okay, going back to the plot. <laughs> so Rosa or Rosa uh, married to uh, Solomon, or the uh, the the Suleiman, um, uh, who uh, has some. Um, yes, yeah, trying to uh, trying to uh, uh, turn him against uh, his son and move it more towards her son. Uh, that's generally what's going on there. Uh, some of okay, may so not come from the text, some of which maybe I'm just inferring from later stuff that you'll get later. Okay, so she's got previous children. That... <laughs> Rasa is the second wife. <coughs> Mustafa is the son by another wife. Mustafa is the heir. Rasa wants him dead so her children can inherit. Okay, so Mustafa is Solomon's son. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, as Thank she's you. saying, he's a baddie, a uh, badden, and, and, and others are saying, no, he's, he's kind of cool. He's fine. Um, yeah, there's a lot of Well, stuff. Well, the messenger seems to be saying, he's quite cool. He might be cooler than you, so you might just want to murder him for that. Mm. Yes, the messen the messengers. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit too cool, man. Do you just hate it when you meet really cool people because they're just so cool? Yeah, maybe we should kill the cool people because you know stuff. I have to say, it does help knowing who Rosa is because mm. she sounds like a Cassandra if you don't know that. Mm. Doom and gloom. I mean. <laughs> I was, you know, it was interesting. I've, actually, there's a really some fabulous speeches in there. It'd be great if I'd got the punctuation sorted out because there was some real times where I thought I'm probably reading sentences that shouldn't be moved together. But, um, yeah, there were just times where I felt like I was too, I was doom and gloom for no apparent reason. But now I know why I'm doing it. Great. Mm. She's yeah. a real cow. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we, what, what we don't have is we don't have a, uh, a prologue, you know, explaining the plot, uh, yeah. which last time didn't actually help because it managed to not explain the plot while explaining the plot, which was quite an achievement and made me quite annoyed with it. Whereas with this, I, at least I feel like 
the sort of debate that's going on here, even if some of it isn't being given its correct spin, is at least clear. You know, they're, they're, they are talking about a person, that person is, a, is, is there, and, and opinions are being expressed, which I felt, you know, uh, and, and, and it felt just sound really felt like it flowed better. For those uh, following along, I'm uh, fairly certain this is the later revised version of the text uh, rather than the earlier version. I think I have managed to just about confirm that that is the case of what we're doing. The later version was shorter uh, and we had some substituted bits. So it's not like it, it just grew and grew and grew. I think uh, actually the revisions may have actually concised it down. Uh, so, uh, you know. Uh, We'll take that as a win. Any other thoughts for Act One? I've been talking a lot. I, I, it just feels like I've been talking a lot, but you know, a lot of those words weren't mine. Uh, <laughs> everyone's remi remaining remarkably silent. <laughs> no. You, you just want to get straight back on into it, don't you? That's what you want. That's what you want. OK, well, you know, I'm going to bow to the room. Uh, act two, scene one, then. Akmat Solus. Who, standing in the shade of humble valleys, looks up and wonders at the state of hills, when he with toil of weary limbs ascends and feels his spirits melt with Phoebus' glories, or sinews stark with earless bitter breathing, or thunder blasts which coming from the sky do fall most heavy on the places high. Then knows, though farther seen and farther seeing from hills above than from the humble valleys, they multiply in woes that add in glories. Who weary is of nature's quiet places, a mean estate with poor and chaste desires, whose virtue longs for knees, bliss for opinion, who judgeth pleasure's paradise in purple, let him see me. No governor of Castile, no petty prince's choice whose weak dominions make weak unnoble counsels to be current, but Basha unto Soliman, whose scepter, nay, servants, have dominion over princes, under whose feet the four forgotten monarchs the footstools lie of his eternal glory. Even I, Thus raised, this Soliman's beloved, thus carried up by fortune to be tempted, must for my prince's sake destroy succession, or suffer ruin to preserve succession. O oh, happy men that know not or else fear this slippery second place of honor's step, which we with envy get and danger keep, Unhappy state of ours wherein we live, where doubts give laws which never can forgive, where rage of kings not only ruin be, but where their very love works misery. For princes' humours are not like the glass, which in it, when in it, shows what shapes without remain, and with the body go and come again, but like the wax, which first bears but his own, till it the seal in easy mould receive. And by, the impression, and by the impression only then is known. In this soft weakness, Rossa prints her art and seeks to toss the crown from hand to hand. Kings are not safe whom any understand. First of herself, she durst send Rostin forth to murder Mustafa, his dearest son. He found him only guarded with his worth, suspecting nothing and yet nothing done. Rostin is now returned, for wicked fear did make him even wickedness forbear. A beggler bee goes since to call him hither, the colour war against the Persian king, the truth to suffer force of tyranny from his enforced father's jealousy. Who utters this is to his prince a traitor, who keeps this guilty is, his life is ruth, and dying lives ever denying truth. <laughs> Thus hath the fancy law of power ordained, that who betrays it most is most esteem, esteemed, who saith it is betrayed is traitor deemed. I sworn am to my king, and to his humour. His humours? No, which they that follow must wade in a sea wherein themselves are lost. Yet, Akhmat, stay, for who doth rest king's minds wrestles his faith upon the stage of chance, where virtue to the world by fortune known is oft misjudged because she's overthrown. 
Nay, Achmat, stay not, for who truth environs with circumstances of man's failing wit, by fear, by love, by hope, by malice, erreth. Nature to nature's bankrupts he engageth. And while none dare show kings they go amiss, even base obedience their corruption is. Then fear dwell with the ill, truth is assured. Opinion be, and reign with fortune's princes. Policy go peer the faults of mortal kingdoms. Death threaten them that live to die forever. I first am nature's subject, then my princes. I will not serve to innocency's ruin. Whose heaven is earth, let them believe in princes. My God is not the God of subtle murder. Solomon shall know the truth. I look no further. Behold, he comes like majesty confused. Horror, revenge, rage lighten in his eyes. All laws give place where power is joined with these. And he must go beyond that will appease. Act two, scene two, enter Solomon. Mercy and love. You phrases popular which undermine and limit princes' thrones, go seek the regions of equality. Greatness must keep those arts by which it grew and ever what it wills or fears make true. My lord, what moves these undermining words which, showing fear in you, stir fear in us? Cruelty and disillusion enter thus. Doth king's restraint of wrath appear like fear? Shall our remissness suffer more than this? Can horror only adoration bear? Behold, the world lays homage at my feet. To them by sword and fire I am known. Must kings that change this likeness lose their own? Two states I bear, his father and his king. These two, being relatives, have mutual bonds. Neglect in either all in question brings. My son climbs up with wings of seeming merit. His course applaus, and mine the scale of order. By dissolution he builds up content, and I displease by planting government. My age spends on the stock of honour won. Flesh hath her buds, her flowers, her fruit, her fall. Work hath his time and rest is natural. His youth hath hope for right and fame for end. Time for a stage, for rival expectation. Ascending by the balance, we descend. Let youth affect goodwill, praise, reputation. Fashion itself to times or times to it. Grow strong and rich in man's imagination. But when her fame reflects scorn upon kings, her glory undermines or else confounds. Of place, time, nature, all the reverend bounds. These crooked shadows no straight bodies have. Practice, ambition, pride are here disguised. And shall love be a chain tied to my crown, either to help him up or pull me down? No, no, this father language fits not kings, whose public universal providence of things, not persons, always must have sense. With justice I these misty doubts will clear, and he that breaks divine and human law shall no protection out of either draw. Sir, where corrupted limbs art doth divide, it hath no name of torment but of cure. Many perish, so the state be sure. Then, Ahmad, bid the eunuchs do their charge. I wound myself in wounding of my son. A king's estates hath of a father's one. Advantageous ambition! Hast thou learnt that present government still gives offences, and long life in the best kings discontenteth? That discontentment's hopes live in succession? Well, false desires which in false glasses show that princes' thrones are like enchanted fires, mighty to see and easy to pass over, by Mustafa's example learn to know, no private thoughts can sound authority. 
Ahmad. I mean that Mustafa shall die. My lord, good fortune doth me witness bear that my hopes need not stand upon succession. Where life is poor in all but woe and fear, then, sir, doubt not my faith, though I withstand this fearful counsel which you have in hand. Resolved I am. A form alone, I doubt, envy and murmur I desire to shun, which yet great examples must be done. The form of proof precedes the form of death. King's honours and their safeties live in both. Against these, to give counsel, I am loath. Thought is with God an act. Kings cannot see the intents of mischief but with jealousy. In what protections then lives innocence? Below the danger of omnipotence. Are thoughts and deeds confounded anywhere? In princes' lives that may not suffer fear. Where place unequal equally is weighed, their power supreme is balanced, not obeyed. This is the way to make accusers proud and feed up starved spite with guiltless blood. A just advantage unto kings allowed, whose safeties do include a common good. Sir, I confess when one man ruleth all, their fear and care are secret keys of wit. Where all may rise and only one must fall, their pride aspires and power must master it. For worlds repine at those who birth or chance above all men and yet but men advance. I know when easy hopes do nurse desire. The dead men only of the wise are trusted, and though crooked fear do seldom rightly measure as thinking all things but itself dissembled, Yet, Solomon, let fear awake king's counsels, but fear not nature's laws, which seldom alter, nor rare examples of iniquity, which but with age of time delivered be. Fear false stepmother's rage, woman's ambition, whereof each age to other is a glass. Fear them that fear not for desire, shame, selling their faith to bring their ends to pass. Establish Ross's children for your heirs, let Mustafa's hopes fall, translate his right. And when her proud ambitions glutted be, straight envy dies. Fear will appear no more. Nature takes on the shape it had before. Shall error escape by art? And shall a bare stepmother's name in her that speaketh truth disguise and shadow parricide from blame? Intents are seeds and actions they include. Princes whose scepters must be feared of many are never safe that live in fear of any. Tyrants they are that punish out of fear. States wiser than the truth decline and wear. Thou art but one. The rest in whom I trust discern his fault and urge me to be just. Though faction's strength be great, her slight is more. Her plots and instruments inlaid with art, less care hath truth than hath the evil part. Traitor, must I doubt all to credit thee? No less is truth where kings deceived will be. The greater number holds the safest parts. That one is but the least of faction's arts. Thy counsel hazards all, their course but one. That painted hazard is but made the gate for ruin of your son to enter at. Truth must the measure be to slave and king. Shall power then lose her odds in anything? God even to himself hath made a law. He doth for fame what kings do but for awe. What but desert makes those that praise accuse? The virtue they admire and cannot use. There ought but truth assail a prince's child? On prince's frailties factions ever build. Speak plain and free my soul from this disease that with the ruin of mine own would please. That which you will not feel, how can you see? For in your love these works were all inweaved, with which most mer worthy men are most deceived. What king or man loves fear, wrong, treachery? These be the things that now in question be. Sir, where kings doubt, wisdom and laws provide due trial and restraint of liberty, and unto caution their estate is tied. But where kings rage becomes superlative, the people do forbear but not forgive.
My lord, then stay. Delays are wisdom where time may more easy ways to safety show. Self-murder is an ugly work of fear, and little less is children's overthrow. Mustafa is yours. More, sir, even he is not for whom... More, sir, even he is not for whom you Mustafa or throw. Suspicions common to successions be, honor and fear together ever go. Who must kill all they fear, fear all they see, nor subject sons nor neighborhood can bear. So infinite the limits be of fear. Well, Ahmak, stay. I strive to rest my thoughts. Words rather stir than quiet fixed impressions. King's hearts must judge what subjects' hearts have wrought. Not your calm heart unthreatened and upright. Such bees fetch honey from the selfsame flower when spiders draw their deep envenomed power. No, no experience wounded is the school where man learns piercing wisdom out of smarts. Innocence includes the serpent, not the fool. The wages great of being or not being. These crudities let me within digest my power shall take upon it all the rest. Act two, scene three, enter Kamina to Solomon and Akmat. They that from youth to suck at fortune's breast and nurse their empty hearts there with seeking higher, like dropsy fed, their thirst doth never rest. For still by getting they begat desire till thoughts like wood, while the main, they maintain the flame of high desires, grow ashes in the same. But virtue, those that can behold thy beauties, those that suck from their youth thy milk of goodness, their minds grow strong against the storms of fortune, and stand like rocks in winter gusts unshaken not with the blindness of desires mistaken. The virtue, therefore, whose thrall I think fortune, thou dost de despisest not the sex of woman. Help me out of these riddles of my fortune, wherein methinks you with yourself do lose me. Let fates go on, sweet virtue. Do not lose me. My mother and my husband have conspired for brother's good. The mind of my brother, my father, and by my mother is inspired for one child to seek mine of another. I that to help by nature am required, while I do help must need still hurt a brother. While I see who's, who conspire, I seem conspired against a husband, father, and a mother. Truth bids me run. By truth I am retired. Shame leads me both the, the one way and the other. With danger and dishonor I am hired. To do against a mother and uh, to do against a husband and a mother in what a labyrinth, labyrinth in honor cast drawn, devised ways with sex, with time, with state, in all which error course is infinite. By hope, by fear, by spite, by love, by hate, and but one only way unto the right, a thorny way where pain must be thy guide, danger the light, Offence of power and praise, such are the golden hopes of iron days. Yet virtue, I am thine, for thy sake grieved, since basest thoughts for all their ill-placed desires, in shame, in danger, death, and torment, glory, that I cannot with more pains write thy story. Chance, therefore, if thou scornest those that scorn thee, fame, if thou hatest that force that 
thy trumpet to sound aloud and yet despite thy sounding laws if you love not these that be example of nature's laws whence you are fooled corrupted conspire that i against Inspired that I against you all conspired, coin with the tyrant virtue, as you call her, that I, by your ravages, re re may be named for virtue to be ruined and defamed. My mother oft and diversely I warned what fortunes were upon such courses builded, that fortune still must be with ill maintained which at the first with any ill is gained. I, Rostan, warned that man's self-loving thought still creepeth to the rude embracing night of prince's grace, a lease of glories yet let, which shining burns, breeds, screens when tis set. And by this creature of my mother's making, this messenger, I, Mustafa, have warned that innocence is not enough to save where goodness and greatness fear and envy have. Till now, in reverence, I have for law forborne to ask or to presume to guess or know my father's thoughts, whereof he might think scorn. For dreadful is that power that all may do, yet they and that all men fear are fearful too. Lo, where he sits, virtue, work thou in me, that what thou seekest may accomplished be. Ah, oh, death, is not thyself sufficient anguish, but thou must borrow fear that threatening glass which, while it goodness hides and mischief shows, doth lighten wit to honour's overthrows. But hushed, methinks away Camina steals, murder be like, in me herself reveals. Camina, whither now? Why haste you from me? Is it so strange a thing to be a father? Or is it that I am so strange a father? My lord, methought, nay, sure I saw you busy. Your child presumes uncalled that comes unto you. Who may presume with fathers but their own, whom nature's law hath ever in protection, and guides in good belief of dear affection to make it greater and the better known? Nay, reverence, sir, so children's worth doth hide as of fathers it is least inspired i think it true who know their children least have greatest reason to esteem them best how so my lord since love is knowledge lives which unto strangers therefore no man gives the life we gave them soon they do forget while they think our lives do their fortunes let the tenderness of life it is so great as any sign of death we hate too much and unto parents sons perchance are such yet nature meant her strongest unity twixt sons and father making parents cause unto the sons of their of their humanity and children's pledge of their eternity fathers should love this image in their sons but streams back to their springs do never run pardon my lord doubt is succession's foe let not her spite poor children overthrow though streams from springs do seem to run away tis nature's lead them back to their mother sea doth nature teach them in ambition's strife to seek his death by whom they have their life things easy to despise, desire impossible do seem 
Why should fear make impossible seem easy? Monsters yet be, and being are believed. Incredible hath some inordinate progression, blood, doctrine, age, corrupting liberty. Do all conquer? When men such monsters be, pardon me, sir, if duty do seem angry, affection must breathe out afflicted breath. With imputation hath such easy faith. Mustafa is he that hath defiled his nest, the wrong the greater, for I loved him best. He hath devised that all at once should die, Rostin and Rossa, Zanger, thou, and I. For none but angels suddenly to hell, our kind and order grown precipitate. Did ever any other man but he in instant lose the use of doing well? Sir, these be mists of greatness. Look again. For kings that in their fearful icy state behold their children as their winding sheet do easily doubt, and what they doubt, they hate. Kamina, thy sweet youth that knows no ill cannot believe thine elders when they say that good belief is great estate's decay. Let it suffice that I and Rossa too are privy what your brother means to do. Sir, pardon me, and nobly as a father, what shall I say and say of holy mother? No, I shall say it, but to write a brother. My mother is your wife, duty in her is love. She loves which not well governed bears the evil angel of misgiving fears, whose many eyes, whilst in itself they see, still make the worst possibility. Unto this fear, perchance, she joins the love which doth in mothers for their children move. Perchance, when fear hath showed her, your must yours must fall in love she sees that hers must rise with all sir fear of frailty is and may have grace and over care of of you cannot be blamed care of your own in nature hath a place passions are often mistaken and misnamed things simply grow sim things simply grow Good grow evil with misplacings. Though laws cut off and do not care of to fashion, humanity of errors hath compassion. Yet God forbid that either fear or cure should ruin those that true and faultless are. Is it no fault or fault I may forgive for son to seek the father should not live? It is a fault or fault for you to know. My mother doubts a thing that thought is not so. These ugly words of monstrous parricide mark from what a hearts they rise, and where they bide violent, despaired with honour broken is. Fear, Lord. Time, death, where hope is misery, doubt having stopped all honesty, ways to bliss, and custom shut, down, shut the windows up of shame, that craft may take upon her wisdom's name. Compare now Mustafa with, your, with his despair, despair, sweet love, sweet youth, sure hopes, honour, a father's love. No infamy to mouse or banish fear. Honour to stay, hazard to hasten fate, can horrors work in such a child's estate. Besides, the gods whom kings should imitate have placed you high to rule, not overthrow. 
for us not yourselves is your estate mercy must hand in hand with power go your scepter should not strike with arms of fear which fathoms all men's imbecility and mischief doth less in should mischief bear a reason deals within this within with frailty which kills not passions that rebellious are but adds subtracts keeps down ambitious spirits with hard examples no with truth and care so much power form not mine instruments for flesh and blood the mix the means twixt heaven and hell unto extremities extremely racked be which kings in art of government should see else they which circle in themselves with death poison the air wherein they draw their breath pardon dear father pity becomes my sex grace with delay grows weak and fury wise Remember Thesis' wish and Neptune's haste killed innocence and left succession waste. If what were best for them that do offend laws did inspire, the answer must be grace. If mercy be so large, where's justice place? Where love despairs and where God's promises end, for mercy is the highest reach of wit, a safety unto them that save with it, born out of God and unto human eyes, like God not seen till fleshy passion dies. God may forgive whose being and whose harms are far removed from reach of fleshly arms. But if God equals or successors had, even God of safe revenges would be glad. While he is yet alive, he may be slain, but from the dead no flesh comes back again. While he remains alive, I live in fear. Though he were dead, that doubt living were. None hath the power to end what he began. The same follows every son. Their greatness or their worth is not so much. And shall the best be slain for being such? Thy mother or thy brother are amiss. I am betrayed, and one of them it is. My mother, if she errs virtuously, and let her heir, heir Mustafa, should die. Kings for their safety must not blame mistrust, nor for summaries sacrifice the just. Well, dear Camina, keep this secretly. I be well advised before he die. Come, Ahmad, to the church. We will go pray God to unfold this probability where power and wit so much offend him may. In this disease of spirits, the true appeal is to that judge that every spirit knows. For we by error else may honour lose. His laws, the life, the innocence, the state, son and father now in balance stand. Kings that have cause to fear take leave to hate sons that aspire as easily lift their hands if i fall now i give that scope to fate our equal gauge being only nature's bands help comes alike to each of us too late if aught between us an advantage stand yet she and you a strife within me move and rest i will with counsel from above and second chorus of Mahatmatian priests of among Christians, even the best divines conclude their church, though thrall to human might, yet be such a fair mould as refines and guides king's powers, else uh, indefinite, that it no tyrant or profaner be, horrors too frequent in authority may not our conquering true 
church, then, assume, by grace and duty, to link God to kings, and kings to man, which, what else, could presume, since might and number, rule all other things than crowns? What honour to our church is due, that fashions itself thus to fashion you? Laws we have none, but what our prin priests inspired. Our light was less, for we had naught to claim to propagate itself the truth desired, and to that end at all mankind did aim, so that while souls we only sought to save, they are with God, and we their empires have. All I, the prophet from our church, divided in outward forms, not lines of inward life, like witty schism, we lovingly decided with well-bent spirits in opinion strife europe in chief our prophets then withstood with her three-mitred god of flesh and blood her lettered Greece, uh, the lottery of art, since Mars forsook her, of subtler never wise, and proud of her new-made gods in fleshly hearts, and she was, and she of old was, of her heathen lies, we undertook with unity of mind, and what their wits dispute our swords did bind, so that ere her gross sex uh, could uh, danger see their throne schools might as idols were resigned to us, new trophies of our monarchy. Thus are the muses still by Mars refined, and thus our church, by pulling others down, I fear, or be it itself, perchance the crown. For till of late our church and prince wed one, no latitude left either to divide. The word and sword endeavoured not alone, but were like mutual voice and echo tied, with one desire jointly to move, speak, do, as if fate's oracles and actors too. Now, while the crown and priesthood joined thus in equal ends, uh, though uh, dignity is distinct, as man's soul to his body linked is crowns by this tincture of divine instinct, so above nature raised the laws of might, as made all errors of the world are right. Vices, I grant, our martial cause then had, for spoil, blood, last, were therein left too free, as raising strong ideas in the bad, brave instruments of sovereignty, like thieves at home, our justice was severe, in other princes' realms our freedoms were. Great the Seregalia uh, was, I must confess, uh, yet so, as Kindle did not quench our spirits, our pleasures never made our natures less. Venus was joined with Mars to spur, stir up merit. In right or wrong, our course was not precise, nor is in any state that multiplies. Yet, to redeem this discipline of vice, we add to the glory of our state one honour by them to the prejudice of strangers conquering more than we did hate our emulation was with crowns not men thus did our vices spread our empire then where since though we still spoil that christian sect which by division fatal to their kind friends duties enemies and right neglect to keep up some self-humour in the wind yet all we thus win not by force but slight poised with our martial conquests will lack weight for force not right, our crescents bear in chief camps, and not courts, our maps of our estate, where church, law, will, and discipline, in brief, established are to make worth fortunate. We scorn those arts of peace, that civil tether, which in one bond tie craft and force together. Of cell-bred sciences we chief chew no card, our food and garments overload us not. When one act withers straight another buds our rest is doing good success our lot our beasts are no more delicate than we uh, this odds have turks of christianity yet by your traffic with this dreaming nation their conquered vice hath stained our conquering state and brought thin cobwebs into reputation of tender subtlety who so stepmother fate so inlays courage with ill shadowing fear as makes it much more hard to do than bear and as in circles who breaks any part that perfect form doth utterly confound or as amongst the feigned lines of art one only right is all else crooked found so from our prophet's sores when sultans stray in human wit power finds perplexed way
Hence, though we make no idols, yet we fashion God as if from power's throne he took his being. Our Alcoran as warrant unto passion, monarchies in all laws, but their own will seeing. He whom God chooseth out of doubt doth well, what they that choose their God do. Uh, who can tell? Again, when such great states learn civility of petty kingdoms, learn they not as fall. Uh, nay, monarchies, when they uh, declining be, brook thou those virtues which they rose withal. Had Mustafa been home in Selim's time, what now is fearful then had been sublime. The Christian bondage is much more refined, though not in real things, in real names, laws, doctrine, discipline, being all assigned to bold upright that witty man-built frame, where every limb, though in themselves distinct, are finally, uh, yet finally, are unto the sceptre linked. An art by which man seems, but is not free, crowns keeping all their specious guiding reins fast in the hand of strong authority, so to relax or wind up passion's chains, as before humble people know their grief, their states are used to look for no re relief. Yet, if by parts we travail to compare what differences betwixt these two empires are, we build no citizens, our strengths are men, and bold treat to be the loser's den. They, by their thoughts, mow their own people down away, perchance to keep, not spread a crown. Of bondage we leave our succession free, office and action of our liberty. They may inherit land, we hope for place. They give the wealthy, we the active grace. We hear the fault, and so demand that head, which hath in martial duties been misled. Their process is to answer and appear, but under laws which hold the, the sceptre dear. Our law is martial, sudden and severe, for fact can rarely intricateness bear. Their laws take life from sovereignty, uh, thankless to which power will not let them be, so that the muscle man sends home his head, the Christian keeps his own till he be dead. Our trade is tax, comprising men and tilings, and uh, uh, draw not their... They mankind's wealth under kings, uh, soothing the tyrant till by his excess want makes the majesty of thrones grow less by taxing people's vice at such a rate as to fill up a sieve, exhausts a state. <laughs> Lastly, so shuffling trade, law, doctrine, will, as no soul shall find peace in good or ill, both being traps alike used to entice the weak and humble into prejudice, our sultans rule their charge by prophet's sores and leave the mufti judge of all their laws. The Christians take and change faith with their kings, which under mitres oft the sceptre brings. Oh, we make the church our sultan's instrument. They, with their kings, will make their church content. They wrangle with themselves, and by disputing questions, think to make the one side mute. If not, then sacrifice the weaker part. As if in thrones blood were religion's art, forcing the will, which is to catch the wind, as if na man's nature were more than his mind. Uh, we, in subduing Christians, conquer both, and lose use of either part our loaf, uh, so that we suffer their fond zeal to pray, that it may, weigh our, may well our conquering armies pay. And where they are, and where we are there, Christians fain would be, if lack of power were not their modesty. Thus do all great states safely manage things, which danger seems to thrones of petty kings. For though the sick have sense of every breath, and shun all what they feel for fear of death, yet in strong states those storms they feel give health, and by their purgings spoil infection stealth. A play of sun motes from man's small world come upon the great world to work heavy doom. For proof, behold in Solomon that fear which solid, uh, which torrid zones of tyranny must bear. For who hath lost man's nature in his passion can never see the world in better fashion. But credit, 
gives to limitless suspicion, uh, which unto all vice giveth one condition. Uh, confusions orb where men may hate their own nature and reason being overthrown, thence go out mandates of conspiracy against Mustafa, who must not guiltless be in such a father under monarch's eyes, as will so nothing but destruction wise. Hence Mustafa from like dreams of the heart sees his destruction wrought by tyrant's art, and yet yields things to name his right to passion, which misplaced duties help power to dishashen. Hey, hence mankind by crafty power oppressed, where it hath given part, still gives the rest, and thinking thrones in all their practice true, dare not of their creatures ask their due, but rather, like mild earth with weeds o'ergrown, yields to be ploughed, matured, and overthrown. Lastly, Thus sceptres fall with their own weight, when climbing power, once risen to their height, descends to make distinction in her lust, which grants that absolute may be unjust, and so subjects to censure what should reign, steps to bring power to people back again. Whence I conclude. Mankind is both the form and matter wherewith tyrannies transform. For power can see neither see, work, or devise without the people's hands, hearts, wit, and eyes. So that were man not himself oppressed, kings would not, tyrants could not make him beast. <laughs> A not unproblematic speech. Um, <laughs> but also, I think, really interesting, uh, in a way, about uh, late Elizabethan, early Jacobean, debating questions of power within their own reign, realm by framing it as an outsider. There's, there's something quite interesting and, and possibly actually very brave going on there. I, I don't know because I didn't dig into the depths of what he was actually saying a lot of the time. I think I was following most of it, um, but um, it was quite difficult. So that's a that's a speech to unpack and write a thesis on. Um, but <laughs> I don't know if anyone else was following it. <laughs> Lindsay. It was, yes, I mean, oh, my goodness. Um, <clears throat> but there was a bit where my ears pricked up slightly when he was talking about uh, the way that the, that the Christians change their church to suit their kings or something like that. I thought, oh, here we go. Here we go. Mm. Um, I mean, very cheekily, could could we just have the last six lines of that and cut the rest? <laughs> You know what I'm like about choruses. <laughs> I mean, it, it does seem he, that this character takes an awfully long time to, to get to whence I conclude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he concludes having after or, or after saying lastly. <laughs> I think you can have one, you can't have both. We had, yeah, we, there were quite a few of those. I was, I was, um, I was noting them in the in the chat. The uh, thence and again and yet and hitherto for probably not that one, but yes, there were there were quite a few of those. <laughs> they, were, they were really quite helpful for me because it gave me a spur yeah. to keep going. It was like, and, and mm. yeah, next slide, please. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yes, in my TED talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, so before that, there was some sustained drama. So um, what happened in that then? And uh, uh, yeah, thoughts. Um, we've got, um, yes, a little debate scene with uh, Solomon and Ahmet. Uh, we've got uh, Kamina coming in. And similarly, uh, 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 there is dialogue. There is sustained dialogue. There is, uh, there is back and forth. Uh, thoughts from the room about that? Liza. Yeah, well, it seems like everyone except Rasa wants Suleiman not to kill Mustafa. Um, Rasa seems to be the only one um, advocating uh, murder. Uh, the jury is still out on Beglarbi Nuncius, the, the messenger. 
the messenger who seems to be more of an ambassador, really. He, um, he seems quite subtle and he has, he seems to have understanding and he presumes to give Solomon advice, whether the advice is good or not remains to be seen. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, reading Ahmad, I quite like Ahmad. Um, one thing that I noticed both in Ahmad and in uh, Rob's <laughs> extremely well-delivered chorus speech, um, but both in those uh, was um, that the author does not outright condemn Islam. He, th there are there are moral Muslims. Uh, there are some who are immoral, um, but most of them are trying to do the right thing and are waxing quite philosophical about what the right thing is. And I like that. I like the philosophical quality of this text. Um, you know, I like the, the characters all seem very strongly drawn, even, yeah. And we, we've got quite a nice family drama, but we've also got some, some quite nice philosophizing. Yeah, I mean, it, it hasn't completely, um, you know, d gone, gone pell-mell for, uh, for, for, for the, the level of problematicness that I was expecting, actually, on the whole. You know, that these people are, you know, however questionable the drawing of this this other society is, um, it is does seem to be attempting to draw to draw a society and draw a real world with real people doing real things, rather than some place that we've done recently where, um, you know, there's, there's, there is a much more cardboard cutout uh, universe uh, at play. So, um, yeah, that, 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 that gives us something. Tom, uh, you, you, you uh, managed to be uh, uh, to step. You were here to step in to be uh, uh, Kamina, um, and 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 listening to an awful lot of other text today. Um, I don't know if that's the short straw or the wrong, the long straw. Um, uh, how have you found it? <laughs> yeah, I, I like it in the sense that it's. It, the language is, I mean, besides the choruses, I thought Kamina and, and um, her father's it was very, very intimate. I liked it. Um, I didn't know she was the daughter initially and then realised. Um, but I liked the language of the play. It's, it's a mature, um, it's, it's handling the subjects. It's not frightened. It's not. It's not going for laughs, if you know what I'm saying. It's not going for, you know, um, sort of like big drama. It's its language is 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 quite tight and quite well written, and and thereby is 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 quite satisfying. But it is long. But the but besides that, it's, I think it's a it's a, a a mature and adult play, if you like. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely in terms of just actually the flow of the dialogue, it is landing a lot better than than the than uh, uh, Alaham uh, before it, where we, I, I felt we were just constantly tripping over the text in a way that we're not with this one. Uh, I wonder if that's because if this is indeed the B text that, that actually a lot more revision and adjustment has actually occurred and it's just been tidied up in a, a certain kind of way. Um, I mean, it's still suffering from. I mean, I, we did actually have the relationship between the daughter and father explicitly laid out in the dialogue of you know, uh, you know, uh, stating who was uh, father and uh, etc. Um, but uh, this play doesn't really lay out the exposition very well. You're you're frequently not quite sure precisely how it's all flowing. And in, certainly in terms of it, anyone listening to it or watching it, 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 it's not giving you a lot to hang your hat on. Uh, I mean, even with cuts or adaptation, it's still it's still quite an opaque text. And that's that's more of a problem. Whereas other plays where you've just got long speeches or, you know, but there's still engagement and action uh, on some level uh, is a lot easier to deal with. But these the, this this play still is, 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 yeah, it's a bit of a, a, a three point problem for me at the moment i don't i don't have an in yet on this one i haven't gone ah i know how to do this now whereas i've gone i quite like bits of this speech that's that's currently my mind I, I i i almost want i i'm quite keen on just unpacking all of the issues with that speech that's actually quite interesting um for me but that's not necessarily dramatic interesting that's just an interesting episode of the podcast with an expert in tow interesting um 
Okay, um, I did contemplate plowing on into Act 3, but I think we're going to just uh, call, call it a night on final thoughts now. Uh, Greg, you, you, you're back in the room. Any final thoughts? Ah, sadly, no sound from Greg. He's in the room, but in, nobody... In, 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 in wherever this is set, no one can hear you scream. Um, I'll go to Lindsay and come back to Greg. Uh, Lindsay, any final thoughts? <laughs> um, yes, I, I really struggled for quite a while not knowing who was who and what was going on. Um, and at the same time, I was aware that it, it, the, the text was flowing quite well. Um, thanks to the editing work done by um, those who who did it, um, it was it was quite easy to kind of cold read and and not get too lost in. Um, as for it being a drama, I mean, I think it's more a sort of um, I, 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 it's a discussion about about government and you know governance and kingship and that that sort of thing and i'm not really sure you know it, you know if i was in the audience at this point i would just be screaming out for somebody to come on with a big knife and just do something basically so yeah. i'm not, not quite sure how helpful that is but um but yes it, it'll be interesting to to see what happens next if yeah. anything or do they just keep talking <laughs> well, you see, I don't, I don't have a problem with the debate drama that doesn't necessarily, you know, if that's what it is, um, and it's much more interested in that that sort of thing. But even this, uh, the, the, you know, framing it that way and saying, well, maybe it's more an audio thing, and you listen to it. But I, I'm finding it very difficult to follow in that uh, that zone as well. Is that it's not so? It's almost like yeah, but maybe you need literally someone to tell you what's about to happen so that you you know what's happening as it's happening. And then you can lock into it better. I, I think there is there is a big issue here about you you need to prime everyone for what they're about to get because it doesn't necessarily land in in your ear uh, as it's as it's going. Uh, Greg, let's see if we can hear you. Hopefully this time. Yay! Yeah. Any final thoughts? Yeah, my laptop really just showed how I felt. <laughs> the battery died. Um, I think we've been spoilt this week after the absolute joys of the other play. Um, I, yeah, I lost track. I mean, R Rossa, whatever her name was, um, really interesting character, but oh, cripes, there were times I was commenting in the chat. I felt like we were in part two because we've been here so long, but we were still in act two and it was just, I, yeah, this isn't doing it for me. Sorry, I will come back. I will come back and see what happens. <laughs> she yeah. dies. Well, well, that's the thing is you can always hope with a text like this that that, that deaths will start occurring because so, you know that does. And actually, we had that with Alham. Actually, once once people started dropping, um, it the, the, the definitely improved uh, when when a little bit more sustained action occurred. Uh, Tom, do you have any additional final thoughts to throw in? Nope. Uh, Liza, any final thoughts? Well, just that, um, yeah, I have a little more time for this play than I do for a lot of other moralizing dramas. We've established the stakes. Does Solomon or does Solomon not murder his son? Um, we haven't met Mustafa yet. Mm. Mustafa's only been talked about. Uh, but most people who talk about him seem to conclude that he's either not a threat to Solomon or only a threat to Solomon by potentially outshining him rather than by actively scheming against him. Um, that the scheming one is Rasa. And again, you know, a bit of misogyny. The wife is, the woman is obviously the weakest and most evil yet most devious um, person. But this is also in Elizabethan society, a woman at this level had, uh, not a lot of real power. So the only power she has is in influencing Solomon. She can't do her own murders, it seems. Um, I mean, there are certainly other examples uh, in this time of female characters who do do their own murders. Uh, so I don't know what Ross's problem is, really. Uh, it, it's early days, you know, there the, the, the might be some more murdering 
options to come. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it, you know, I, I, I would say I look forward to it, but <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued by this play. I'm not dismissing it out of hand, and it would be kind of fun to try and stage it. Though you, I mean, fun in some ways. It's a challenge. I'm going to go with it's a challenge. I mean, I, I do have it sort of in my mind a sort of mental map of, of, of a sort of spectrum of what you might call neoclassical drama, um, where you've got on one end uh, a play like Tancred in Gunsmunda, um, which, you know, still has long speeches and uh, and stuff, but which which feels very stageable and very, very active. And, and then you've got the much more literary end of the spectrum, and this is where this is quite firmly sitting at the moment. Um, and and yeah, where that where it finally sits and what uh, what it what its options are. I say at this moment, I don't know what its options are. Um, normally, I get to a point in the play where I go, okay, I can, you could do it like this, you could do it like this, you could do it like this, you could do it like this. And at the moment, I'm I, I don't have that. But maybe next time, I say once the the action starts to resolve itself um, or the debate starts to resolve itself then the options about what you do with the rest of the play because i think that was again the problem with Al uh, Alaham was the first half really dragged um and then it picked up um noticeably um and then it sort of went down dodgy just what alleys uh, as i recall the ending was sort of just there was a lot of us just going so what uh as it ended so um so it, so there was a sort of cu curve on that anyway uh, i'm going to stop talking now and close the session all that remains to thank all the wonderful readers for their wonderful reading thank you very much everyone and goodbye bid the eunuchs do their charge <laughs>